We were very fortunate to have good coordination uh, with the uh, White House and with FEMA from the very beginning of this. This is the United States of America, and I emphasize United. We've seen extraordinary cooperation uh, at every level of government, as the governor has said, and the cooperation began before the storm hit. It took a hurricane to get President Biden and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis together. The pair seen side by side touring damage in Florida. But it wasn't enough to stop the politics and President Biden from pushing his green agenda. Well, the biggest thing the governor's done and so many others have done, they've recognized this thing called global warming. We're in a situation where the Colorado River looks more like a stream. There's a lot going on. And I think the one thing this has finally ended is a discussion about whether or not there's climate change. I'd be curious to know if he has talked about that with any of those Republican governors. Uh, Biden is getting some pushback for sure after he tried to link the storm to climate change. His own hurricane expert had just said days ago there's no evidence to back up one storm event with what we just saw in climate change. Effect does climate change have on this phenomenon that, that is happening now? Because it seems these storms are intensifying. That's the question. Here. I don't think you can link climate change to any one event. Okay. On the whole, on the cumulative, uh, climate change uh, may be making storms worse, uh, but uh, to link it to any one event, um, I, I would caution against that. Ben Domenech, Fox News contributor, editor at large for The Spectator. Ben, always good to have you in focus. Your top line thoughts on this. Well, the, uh, the first uh, thing is, and I'm glad that you played that remark from the uh, NOAA representative, uh, the truth simply is that these storms are actually not getting more frequent and they're not getting worse. Uh, if you look back at the statistical analysis that the NOAA has put forward, that's very clear. Uh, in fact, uh, the reason that you see the levels of property damage as being as high as they are is that, frankly, we've had a lot of development in these areas in the line of a lot of the storms that appear. But in fact, the NOAA OAA uh, shows that these storms have actually declined in number uh, in recent years, certainly in terms of a historical pattern. So it's simply just not the case uh, that uh, the president is in any way accurate in saying this. The other thing is that I think you should choose your moment. You know, you're responding to something very significant, horrible, tragic in so many different ways, the loss of, of life and of mm -hmm. property that we're seeing in Florida. And I think that you want to be able to work closely, regardless of, of party differences, with governors who are facing such challenges. We certainly have seen that in the past under, under previous presidents, uh, their ability to set things aside, set partisan goals aside in order to work with people on the ground. And I think you that know, rather than be kind of the bigger man in this moment, the president chose to uh, engage in what is essentially a partisan political attack. You know, uh, just real quickly, one thing also kind of struck me, and I think you and I have talked about this maybe in the past. Um, it felt like he was flexing to have a moment. Like maybe he could take down mm. DeSantis and some of these other governors the way that Christie was taken down with his arm around former President Barack Obama around Storm Sandy, Super Storm Sandy. And you're absolutely right when you say there's no time for politics in all of this. Um, but that is a political game that we have seen played before. Just your quick thought on that. I think that that's totally true, Harris, and it's one of these situations where, you know, I think time and again we've seen with Biden that he tries to manipulate these scenarios in ways that, that really leave a sour taste in your mouth. It's not something that you want to see in that moment from the commander in chief, uh, and it's decidedly unpresidential in my view. Uh, but I think it's also a sign that he feels threatened by Governor hmm. DeSantis, who could potentially be a challenger for him and a very powerful one. DeSantis looked pretty natural behind that presidential seal at that podium, I would just point out. I knew that you would. Uh, speaking of <laughs> trying to elevate himself in that moment or those moments, President Biden seemed to get caught on a hot mic, although you know I don't believe that this is a coincidence because we've seen it before. He was down there touring the mm -hmm. hurricane damage with a Florida mayor and said this. Yeah. The White House has yet to comment on the president's choice word there, and it's not the first time he's used profanity, perhaps to ramp up his own platform. Watch. Mm -hmm. 
That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son. You didn't even need the bleep there. You still knew what he said. Look, those are moments when the president maybe is feeling a little bit small next to Obama as he puts together what ended up being Obamacare, his signature plan and legislation. And then he's being, you know, asked by a reporter about inflation. That was months ago. Imagine what he'd call him now. Look, I think that uh, there are certain times when the president likes to sort of lean into this crotchety old man shtick that he does. Uh, he, I think he makes it f uh, him feel like he's connecting with people on on uh, a basic level, uh, and and basically, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking like a normal politician. Hmm. Uh, we see some politicians do this, but I think that in this case, you know, my deeper question is sort of. Let's let's take that to the nth degree. You know, if that's your attitude towards things, what does it say about the FBI and, and other government entities investigating a certain Hunter Biden? Do you think do you have that same attitude toward uh, the the way that they are screwing around potentially with someone who's your own flesh and blood? Uh, I, I just think that there's a limit to uh, this type of thing. And it's not, again, something that we want to see from a president in this moment. We've seen presidents who have risen to take on you know significant challenges like this mm -hmm. in the past. And it's been great moments for them. Uh, I don't think that Joe Biden is really navigating this moment particularly well. Well, and it's hypocritical because I remember when he would chide uh, pres former President Trump about, don't you know, the language he uses. I mean, these are big moments. People are dying, and that's when he chooses to use that language. Uh, ben Dominesh, great to have you in focus always. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.